What is going on people and welcome back to the channel. In this video, you guessed it, we're comparing the Caddy with the Transit Connect. Now, as always with these videos, I'm here at Hamworthy Car Centre. So if you are interested in any of these cars or any of the other cars that you see on the forecourt while I'm making this video, you can find them at Hamworthy Car Centre's website, which is linked below. Now, for anyone that watches the channel, you will know that I'm a massive Volkswagen fan. Now, one thing I'd like to make clear before we do continue with this video is these vans seem on the face of things to be very similarly spec'd. They're around the same price. The interior feels roughly the same, you know, with various parts of plastic and leather. So this is the closest comparison that I could find between these two vehicles. Now, I think it's only natural to start with a Caddy, as the Caddy is a van that I've never owned, but a Caddy is a van that I've always wanted to own. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't need a van for day-to-day -day life. I just like owning them. I've just got rid of my transporter and it is very possible that I'm going to end up buying a Caddy as it's like the happy middle ground for me. This size van, it's, it's as small as a car, but you've got the utility of being able to put stuff in the back. Of course, you lose the addition of rear seats, so it's not the same as a car, but once you've owned a van, you kind of, you kind of just know. It's, it's great to have that ability to just be able to slide things in and out of the back and, and kind of have that van feel, but whilst driving a car. So this one is a Volkswagen Caddy and it is a trend line. And for anyone that doesn't know, they start with start line, trend line, then high line, then sport line. And this is right down the center of it. And you get some very nice things with this vehicle, but you don't pay the premium of the high line or sport line price tag because they do usually fetch a premium. Things that you can expect with this, is you can expect a leather cladded steering wheel, the leather cladded gear, gear shifter. You also get AC with this, which is a massive thing throughout the Volkswagen scene. Lots of people that buy the lower spec vans, such as start lines, often regret getting the start line because they then don't have the AC. So while we're here, I think we should talk about the interior. Now I've already mentioned some of the extras that you get just with the specification of this vehicle, but the interior of this does feel very much like a lower spec Golf from probably 2010. Now I say that because we've got quite a plasticky feel throughout the dash. We've got the same head unit and we've got the same cluster. So if you've driven a Volkswagen from around that area, you're probably gonna recognize a lot of the parts that are in this vehicle. That being said though, it doesn't feel like a cheap interior. They've got some very nice style in here, lots of storage areas. You've got a nice big cubby hole on the top, a nice big cubby hole just in the, on the top of the glove box. And obviously you've got the glove box as well, which opens up. You've got two very big door bins on each door and you have space for four bottles in the center, which is quite a lot. As I said, because this is based off similarly to a Golf or even more similar to a Toran, you've got these rear cup holders that would normally facilitate um, rear cup holders for the rear seats, but in this situation, they're just spare, so you've got four cup holders in the front. You've got a USB port in the middle that's gonna connect you to the media interface, and you can even get some of these with Apple CarPlay and Android CarPlay, although this one is a lower spec, smaller screen, but you can upgrade these to have a larger screen. So if you are interested in a better media system, there is an option out there for a larger screen. One thing to note when retrofitting these, if you did decide you wanted a larger screen in your caddy at a later date, it's quite difficult to program an aftermarket one, or not so much an aftermarket one, one that's removed from another vehicle into this. They've got internal cords, and there are people that can crack them, but they are very few and far between and usually work out quite more expensive than what you would say for uh, an Alpine Halo unit, which would probably be better. So there are upgrade abilities to these head units and, and with all the Volkswagen scene in general, and that goes for the, for the Fords as well. But just things to consider when you are specking it out, if you do want something specific, it's best to best to ensure that you can either fit that later or whether it's just like non-economical to fit to the vehicle. So the door cords are very, very plasticky. There's not, there's not any comfort on the door cords at all. Even the armrests aren't, aren't comfortable, but this is a utility vehicle. So you kind of wouldn't expect it to be, to be plush and comfortable because you just might end up ripping it. One thing that this hasn't got is it's not got the auto headlights that you probably expect from a van of this age, but it does come fully kitted with cruise control, voice activation, which I think you'll probably never use. And it has got quite, quite a comprehensive interface on the dash to find out various bits of information about the vehicle. And I've always liked Volkswagen. In even this era, my transporter had the exact same dashboard as this, and I'm a big, big fan of it. And you've probably seen from the YouTube channel, that I've driven some very nice cars with very nice interfaces for the dashboards. But I think one of my go-to ones and one of my favorites is this era of Volkswagen. It's just very, very simple. You've got a couple of buttons to navigate left and right, up and down, and you can get to all your screens through that way, rather than all these complex touch systems. Above me, there is a very, very large storage pocket. 
However, the lip on it is not too big, so if you were to overload this, things would definitely come flying out at you. They may be good for like one big item, but if you were deciding to put paperwork up there or any form of documents for your business, they probably would slide everywhere and get very messy very quickly. In the visors, you do have slide across mirrors, which believe it or not, is quite a rare nicety to get in vans, but they are there nonetheless. And the seats, although they are comfortable, they are very, very boring looking. These things would not look out of place in a 2004 Seat Ibiza. And I think if I were to ever get a caddy, which, like I say, is possibly on the cards, they will be the first things to come out of this and I'll be replacing them with something just a little bit nicer. And now we find ourselves in the interior of the Transit Connect. Now this is the first time I've actually been in one of these, although it does feel very familiar because it is exactly the same as every other Ford I've ever driven. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. Now to start with again, we've got a leather clad multifunction steering wheel that has all the buttons that you will ever need, including voice control. We don't in this case have a leather clad gear shifter and handbrake lever. So if that is a deal breaker for you, then the Transit does not support you. With this vehicle as well, we do have the air conditioning unit that is pre-installed. And something that Ford do, which is quite nice, is they fit heated windscreens to a lot of their fleet, whereas the Cadre, the heated windscreen will only usually come with a Highline or Sportline model. So that is something that you have to pay a premium for. Another addition that this interior has over the caddy is this has a heated driver's seat. Now it doesn't have a heated passenger seat and we'll probably look into why that is later on in the video. And again with the door cords, we've got this very plasticky effect. However, you do have one space on the door cord that is a bit softer for your arm, which is where the caddy does fall foul. Now I must admit that I'm coming into this review with a bit of a biased opinion because I already hate the interface from Ford. I hate the interface what Ford offers. I hate the color of it. I hate the way it navigates. I'm not a massive fan of it. And this is running the exact same interface and what I'd expect. Um, the screen's very small, it's got a crap color. I'm just not a big fan of it. And I'm sure it is like Apple and Android. Whichever one you use first, you're gonna be more familiar with and you're gonna enjoy that little bit more. But for me, I'm just not a big fan of this media interface. Now, one thing the Transit does excel in terms of comparing it with the Caddy is this two plus one or two plus a half. I'm not sure how they call it, but basically the middle area here has got a seat in it. Now, that is not at the expense of storage space. In fact, I think because of this middle seat, we now have more storage space because you lift the middle seat up and you have a nice big cubby hole. In fact, we've got two cubby holes, one small one and one large one towards the rear. We've got a USB charging slot in there and we've also got an aux in which connects it to this media system. Next to that, on display at all times, we've got a 12 volt charging system and the roller wheel for the heated seat of the driver. And I think that's one of the reasons why the passenger seat isn't heated. Of course, it's probably to save money because this is a utility vehicle, but at the same time, because it's a, a joined seat, it's got a split down the middle and the top bit comes off and it probably would be a bit more difficult to install a heating element in that because you would then have cables that need to be manipulated around the corner so they can hinge. So additional to the storage, what you've got under this seat is you've got two very large door bins on either door and on the top you've got another storage area which I don't think is quite as large as the caddies. However, the lip is a very similar lip so you're probably going to be able to store a similar amount of stuff in there without it falling out. One thing to note with the interiors of the Fords and the Volkswagens is they do vary in terms of their styling. So the styling of this, I feel like is very, very futuristic, attempting to be more futuristic than the Caddy is. The Caddy has their design and they're probably gonna stick with that for a number of years. Whereas this just feels like it's pushing that boat out in like sharp angular curves and nice curves going across the top. Now that is a personal preference thing. And of course I like things um, subdued and, and not as in your face and not angular but that is definitely a personal preference thing. And, and I, it's not just the vehicles that I like, I and mean, I apply that across my whole life. I like things very minimalistic. In this one, you do have automatic headlights, which is a nice addition to have and something you would expect of all vehicles this age, but for some reason, Volkswagen has missed it on that spec list on that vehicle. So with both of the vans, I'm six foot and I have more than enough leg room here. In fact, I could probably add another half a foot onto me and I'd still be able to drive this vehicle. So the bulkhead is not so much of an issue with this. Whereas I found with a transporter, which is the larger vehicles to these type of vehicles that I felt legroom was quite restricted. Um, but let me know what you think about that. That is definitely a preference thing, but I feel like that this will support a bigger person than maybe some of the bigger vehicles with bulkheads. That being said, if you are too big for either of these vehicles, the bulkhead can be fully removed or sometimes people cut out a slight section of the bulkhead just to facilitate a longer driver fitting in. The bulkhead's not structural, so there's no real big deal with removing that. 
So exterior styling then, and I feel like we already know what the caddy looks like because it's looked exactly like this for probably the past 10 years. Now, of course, we've got the upgraded headlights, and if you do get a tailgate model, you get some more stylish looking tail lights. But this one is not the tailgate, it is the barn door, so it's got some very, very basic rear lights. The styling along the side of the vehicle is, as you can see, very, very flat, which, for me is a preference when having a utility vehicle because one of the things to consider if you're using this on building sites or in sites where maybe it might get banged and bumped the less angles you've got the less creases you've got to damage the better because a dent here can quite easily be pulled out but if you get a dent on this crease then it's going to be an issue and that's probably where it contrasts with the transit so now i'm not sure if you can see this with a light but the transit is very very much more angular so we have a lot of body lines a lot of creases just on the caddy you have one crease here but on the ford we've decided to put multiple creases in here and also further down again the same story one on the caddy multiple we do have a nice long bumper bar which is larger than the bumper bar of the caddy and by bumper bar i mean this large bit of plastic trim it's going to hit a wall if you accidentally open your door onto it but we do have a lot more angles here and if you were to bump this or use this on a day-to-day -day basis and it potentially get knocked and banged we have a lot of angles or creases to bang that being said it does look a lot more stylish so it all depends on what you're looking for in a van so a bit what you've probably all been waiting for is the loading area of this caddy now as you can see from this video as well we do have reverse parking sensors at the back here and the loading area of a short wheelbase caddy measures 1.77 meters in length and 1.55 meters wide and that gives us a total loading volume of 3.2 cubic meters this caddy comes with a single sliding door and you have various hook points across the vehicle just to mount stuff in i think you've got six hook points in total so you can mount stuff right down to the chassis which is probably going to be useful for strapping things down in the back of here certainly if you don't carry too much and one thing I like to always think about when I'm getting vans like this or looking for a van is how many motorbikes can you fit in the back of it and I think in this van you're probably not going to fit any motorcycles unless you want to want to get a van to take some children's motorcycles away um, but you're definitely not going to be getting a full-size motorcycle in this not with the bulkhead that being said in a Kangoo, I have fit a full-size motorcycle in when I fell off it. It was very, very precariously placed in the van, but um, it did fit nonetheless, and that is a very similar size to this. We do have two very bright LED lights on the roof line here, and that is a very, very nice addition, and certainly something that I'm glad to see Volkswagen moving towards because my, my Transporter, which was not too much older than this, a very, very similar age, had the ugly yellow ones which don't give out much light whereas these are nice white lights that give out a lot of light so if you are in the van at night time that's going to become very very useful additional to that this van has got glass rear windows that have been blanked out with some metal plates and it's also been ply lined throughout now i've got my thoughts on ply lining and i'm not a massive fan of it certainly in this application where people use self tappers and go straight through the door skin but it has a tool i just feel like you put the ply lining in protecting the vehicle and then you've done more damage by screwing holes in the vehicle by putting the ply lining in that's just my thoughts on ply lining that being said this is a very very good job of ply lining it's all trimmed in nicely and corked in and it looks very nice so now we're in the back of the transit connect and immediately i get this feeling that it's better designed than the caddy we've got a nice finish around and it looks like a factory finish these are all these panels are all in with popper pins they're not screwed into the door panels We've also got some plastic trims on the side that cover the wheel arches. There is a little bit of extra thing that's been added aftermarket here, which I'm not too much of a fan of, but yeah, it's there to protect the wheel arches again. And one thing I do immediately notice is the bulkhead in this is very, very bulbous. So although when I tell you the lengths, the dimensions of this bed, the bulkhead seems to come over and overhang the area quite a lot. So although you might fit some things in lengthways going down here, if it was any higher, the bulkhead would probably push it out of the back door in addition to this we do have two sliding doors on this vehicle so you can get things in from either side which would be a nice thing to have as a businessman because then you could always stack certain things for certain jobs up at one door and certain things for certain jobs at another door we have a nice plush finish on the floor here it's like a rubber matting that protects the floor nice addition to have it saves having to screw holes in your floor and it's pr th doing things like that to vans like this is probably going to be promoting rust in the future so it's nice that that Ford have given you that, that rubber matting so you don't have to go that extra mile after you've got it and, and install a ply flooring. Again, we've got four hook down points here, which to me seem a little bit more heavy duty than the caddy. Um, in fact, a little bit is probably a term I'd use lightly, a lot more heavy duty than the caddy. These things are solid. Um, 
Whereas the Caddy just, I mean, they don't feel weak in the Caddy, but when compared to this, they're definitely not as strong as these. But I guess a fixing is only as good as the bolt that holds it down, so it'd be interesting to see what they're strapped into, whether these are strapped into main legs of chassis, I don't know. In this one, we just have the one bright LED light, which is up at the top corner here. That means that it is very bright, and I feel like it is giving off a similar amount of light as the two lights in the Caddy. So the loading area of the Transit Connect is 1.78 metres long at the floor and that is, that is caveat in that, saying at the floor because they know how much this, this bulkhead overhangs. 1.26 metres from the floor to the roof and that equates to 2.9 cubic metres in total, so slightly less than the Caddy. And I feel like a lot of that is lost with these big bulky wheel arch covers what you've got on the side. There's no real need for them to be that big. I'm sure they are hide in some form of electrics but I just feel like Caddy have got that hidden in a much better space so you can utilise this loading area a lot better. So one thing I've just realised while recording this is this is not a twin slider, this is a single slider. However, they've installed the step and the interior door panel for you if you did ever want to try and convert that. That's a very weird thing to install considering there's no door on that side. There's only one door on this side. Now, if that was a deal breaker for you, I'm sure you could probably pick these up in twin sliders quite regularly, just as you probably could do the Caddy. But on this one, it is not a twin slider. Right then, so we are in the Transit Connect. And first impressions, like I say, this seat is initially a bit bolt up, right? I don't know who's been sat in here before me. So first impressions, it's a very, very quiet, quiet van. Now, I feel like this is commonplace among most vans now and it doesn't really need to be said anymore. I feel like gone are the days where you get in a van and you have your head rattled from your body because of the ambient noise that's caused. Now this bulkhead is playing a massive part in it. But the overall feel from this is very, very car-like and it is silent. I'm not sure if that's because I've now got two kids under the age of two, but this in here is bliss. Now it kind of is the gift that just keeps giving in terms of storage. I've just seen another storage cubby hole on top of the dash there. I'm not sure how deep that actually is, but it, uh, it's another place to store stuff. Now one thing I've just done is I've lost my phone down the side of this seat and boy, we are not getting that back until I stop driving. That is tight down there. Um, I don't even lift this middle seat up just in case it's trapped in a mechanism somewhere and I just snap my phone in two. But that is tight down there, so if, uh, if I were to ever own one of these, I would definitely put some form of fail safe inside there just so if I do ever drop things down, it's not a massive issue to get it back. Now, as I previously mentioned, this multimedia system, what you've got inside here, it's not that great. It's definitely not that great. But if you're looking for a van, this is a good van. I'm, I'm really, really impressed with this van. And I'm sure a lot of people, just like the transporter video, clicked this video thinking, I know Josh, Josh likes Volkswagens. Of course he's gonna say that a Volkswagen is the better van. But I don't think it is. Now, yes, I've not driven the Caddy yet. This is the first one that I've test drove. But I've driven Caddies in the past. I've driven Golfs in the past. I've driven Volkswagens in the past and I know exactly how they feel. And it's not bad to say that the Caddy drives exactly like a Golf. That, that is a compliment on a van, on a van chassis. But this, this I'm, I'm really impressed with this vehicle. And if it wasn't for this ugly media interface and maybe this slightly obscene interior, this is definitely my favorite van. And considering how closely these two are priced and spec, they all spec very, very similarly. It's definitely going to be a preference thing. Which one do you like the look of and which one do you prefer to drive? Now, out of the two, I feel like this is a smoother drive. And, and I hate to say it, but it is. It is a smoother drive and it's more enjoyable to drive. Now, of course, you could always opt for the DSG version of the Caddy and that would definitely trump both of them. The DSG version of the Caddy will be the best drive out of the two. Um, whether you like automatics or not, you can't really argue that they, they drive a lot smoother and uh, they're a lot easier to drive just because you don't have to do as much thinking. And I've always opted for automatics in my daily drivers just because I reserve that privilege of enjoying driving for a fun vehicle, a fun car. So the drivability is very, very important to me and this just ticks the boxes in all of that and it is very smooth to drive, it's pleasurable to drive 
And for me, the only negative is the styling. I'm just not that big of a fan of the styling. But other than that, there's not much more to say about this van. You know, it, it drives as you'd expect. And, it's, and if you're expecting me to say anything special about how this van feels, then, then I'm sorry, because it, it just feels normal. It just feels normal as you'd expect, which is a total compliment. It feels like a car. So we'll get back to Hamworthy Car Centre and take the caddy out for a spin. Right then, so the first thing that immediately greets me is the overwhelming sound of a van. And that is from the engine, the noise that the engine's making, and I'm not sure if the microphone's gonna pick it up, but it does sound like a traditional van. And this, this seat belt echoing through the non-sound deadened door frame. Now, I didn't get that with the Transit. I, I just didn't get that at all. There's a lot more plastic covers. There's a lot more sound deadening, it seems, in that vehicle. And of course, it's not aided by the fact that this bulkhead is not a solid bulkhead and it is mesh, so I can hear the echoing in the back of the vehicle. But it is just something to consider. Now, for me, this interior is much, much nicer. This is far more to my taste. I much prefer it. I like the flat bottom steering wheel. I just like the feel of the steering wheel in general. It's not as bulky. It's not as in your face. I like the cluster, like I said previously, it just works really well for me. And this, this interior, hands down, is the winner out of the two. But the noise of this and the feel of this vehicle is not a scratch on the Transit. And I knew when I got in the Transit straight away, as soon as I sat down and started driving, I thought, this is far, far better than the Caddy. But I hadn't driven the Caddy for probably six months now. And driving them back to back, just like I've done then, um, it's night and day. It's night and day. The feel of that vehicle is so much more better. It's so much more refined. Now, yes, for me, personal preference, it doesn't look as good. But it is, it does feel like a better vehicle. Now, I know some of the problems what plague Volkswagens, and I know some of the things what I probably would need to look out for if I were to buy one. And just a few of them that spring to mind are dual mass flywheels and DPF issues. And it's nothing that can't be, that can't be avoided if you, if you know what you're looking for and, uh, and shop correctly. Now I'm not familiar with things like that with regards to Transit Custom, but looking on the forums, just doing a, a general overview on the forums, uh, there doesn't seem to be many issues with them. Whereas if you look on the forums of the Volkswagen Caddies and Transporters, probably have a lot of people talking about these various issues. Now, nine times out of 10, they are avoided with um, correct user maintenance, you know, things like the DPF, uh, if you leave your tank over a quarter full um, and do a long drive over 2000 RPM occasionally, then you're probably gonna clear your DPF, you're gonna do an actual regen. So the fact that that gets blocked is usually user error. And in fact, nine times out of 10, it is always gonna be user error. But even though I know what I know about these vehicles, I still just prefer the look of them and you, and you just can't beat the styling, for me anyway. Even the slightest things, I'm not sure if you can hear it, I hope you can, but this is the click of the handbrake before it's fully depressed. And because of the lack of sound deadening, it, I, can, I can hear it echoing through the full chassis. I'm not sure you can hear that, but that just shows the, the lack of sound deadening in this vehicle. And yeah, most, a higher spec might counteract that and it could possibly do that. You know, if you get maybe a, a sport line and I believe that they come with carpet carpets rather than plastic carpets, if that makes sense, a fabric carpet. That made absolutely no sense. But basically some of the higher spec ones come with carpets and not rubber mats. Maybe that would mitigate some of the sound deadening. But yeah, it, it, is, it is so evident when you get into one back to back from the other it is so so evident yeah and i think prior to this video i mean i mean i, I knew like i said i know i know what they drive like but now i've got quite a large criticism on caddies is that they are so loud and if i were to ever buy one of these my first port of call would be to sound deaden it I'd, I'd certainly want to want to get that interior feeling a little bit more like the transit connect but again, like with the other vehicle, there's not much more to talk about. If you are aware of what a Golf drives like or any other Volkswagen drives like, this drives very, very similar. It's just a little bit louder. I feel like there is a little bit more go in this van than the Transit, and I'm not sure if that's just because it feels like it's going quicker because everything's a little bit louder, but it definitely feels like it picks up a little bit better. And one thing you can't really fault is the engines on these. Although they have quite a poor flywheel design, the engines are solid, uh, they're, they're good to go. They are, 
they're reliable, they're quick, they pull pretty well. And if you did, if you were interested in remapping one and getting a bit more power out of it, they do map very, very well. And there's lots of people we've tried and tested maps that don't really reduce the longevity of your engine, but also make it quite a lot quicker and more economical. So I've spent long enough with these two vans now to make an informed decision. Now you might be surprised at this, but without doubt, the better van is the Transit. That being said, if I have to pick between these two, I would probably still go for the caddy and just because of the styling. Now I guess that shows how much of a snob I am because I know full well that this is the better vehicle. Drives better, it feels better, it's cheaper, but I still go for this just because I just love the styling. Now there is work that needs to be done for this and I would definitely do the work if I were to purchase this one. But this has already got it all done. And the main thing is just the drive of it and the way it feels. So if like me, you like the looks of your vehicles, then this is probably a winner. If like me, you like the way it feels and drives, then this is probably a winner. But which one should it be if you're getting it for a utility vehicle for your business? And it should probably be the Renault Kangoo. Not only because it says business on the back, but this is just a much, much cheaper vehicle and it is very similar to the other two. Now we're not gonna review this in this video, we are gonna review this in another video, so please do click the link above if it's out already and you can see the review on this. But from a business point of view, it's a no-brainer for me. It's half a price, it does the same job, it says business on the back, and yeah, it might not be the best looker, but if you're not bothered about that, then this is probably gonna be your business vehicle of choice. Now I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope I've given you some information about the Transit and the Caddy that maybe you didn't know before or maybe helped sway your decision on which one you want to buy. If you did enjoy the video then please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and if you have liked any of the vehicles that you've seen on this video then please do contact Hamworthy Car Centre, let them know that I sent you and you'll be able to view and test drive these vehicles, Covid dependent, at your leisure. I'll catch you guys in the next video.